from Washington, this is VOA News. The U.N. cites Syrian executions as war crimes. President Obama prepares to unveil reforms to the National Security Agency and other intelligence agencies. I'm Ira Melman reporting from Washington. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is urging the Syrian opposition to join next week's peace talks in Geneva. The Western-recognized Syrian National Coalition has said it would announce Friday whether or not to go to Geneva. Opposition leaders have expressed misgivings about sitting at a peace table with Syrian government officials. Kerry is appealing to them not to miss an opportunity to form a transitional government. All sides must agree on the makeup of the new government, meaning Syrian President Bashar al-Assad would likely be excluded. Kerry is rejecting Mr. Assad's attempts to shift the focus of the talks from forming a new government to fighting terrorism. Mr. Assad considers the Syrian rebels terrorists, Kerry says the president is trying to undermine the peace talks. Also Thursday, the U.N. Human Rights Office said executions carried out by Syrian rebels, especially on al-Qaeda-linked groups, could amount to war crimes, especially an al-Qaeda-linked group. Spokesman Rupert Colville told United Nations Radio about the people who have been killed. These are prisoners. These are people they've captured, who they've been holding. Some of them you might characterize as hostages. It's hard to draw the line as to who's a prisoner of war, if you like, or who's a hostage. And executing them, I mean, quite clearly against international law, most probably a war crime. U.N. High Commissioner for Human Rights, Navi Pele, said there were reports from the cities of Aleppo, Idlib, and Raqqa of mass executions of civilians and fighters no longer part of the war. A U.N.-backed tribunal has opened the trial against four men accused in the 2005 assassination of former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafi Kariri. He died when a van packed with explosives blew up in Beirut, killing 21 others and wounding more than 200. A special tribunal for Lebanon began the trial Thursday in the Netherlands against four members of the militant group Hezbollah who were being tried in absentia. The prosecution plans to call hundreds of witnesses in presenting its case. The defense is expected to give its opening statement to the tribunal Monday. Hezbollah has denied any involvement in the attack and denounced the tribunal as a conspiracy by Israel and the United States. As President Barack Obama prepares to unveil reforms to the National Security Agency and other intelligence agencies, some lawmakers are already calling on Congress to act to protect the privacy and civil liberties of those whose phone and email records are being collected. The president is expected to turn to Congress to help establish limits on government surveillance. An unusual coalition of liberal Democrats and libertarian Republican lawmakers are demanding policy changes to restore confidence at home and abroad. Republican Representative Cynthia Loomis. I do think it's done damage to the United States abroad. Um, I would like to see a more rational basis for collecting that kind of data. Loomis is co-sponsor of a House bill that would require U.S. intelligence agencies to notify Congress of their total budgets for intelligence gathering each year. She says more transparency is needed. Some lawmakers have concluded that the massive phone records program is not valuable enough to national security to justify the intrusion on Americans' privacy. Cindy Sane, VOA News on Capitol Hill. Political leaders in the Central African Republic have agreed on guidelines for replacing interim president Michel Jotaja, who was forced to resign last week. The Transitional National Council says it will elect the new interim leader Monday. 
Council says people can submit names of possible candidates until midday Saturday. The group plans to evaluate the candidates on Sunday. Burma, also known as Myanmar, has opened its first high-level meeting as chair of the ASEAN by saying relations with China will be enhanced by its leadership and the regional bloc. Leadership of the bloc, rather, foreign ministers from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations began meeting Thursday in the ancient Burmese city of Bagan. It is the first high-level ASEAN meeting since Burma took over as chair at the beginning of the year. The ASEAN nations of Vietnam, the Philippines, Brunei, and Malaysia are all involved in territorial disputes with China in the South China Sea. Burma's role chairing ASEAN follows political reforms that have led to the lifting of most international sanctions. This is VOA News.